Hey, my name is Polishlings, this is Ace Academy as usual, woken up by the alarm. And somehow I woke up energized, cool. And throw off the blankets, today's our match against Ona Bogesha and I'm looking forward to it. I run through my morning routine, thinking up strategies in my head, then try to refocus this, I finish my breakfast, I stay at the class to attend before my match. I drop my bucket, hop on my back, hopefully it's not the final thing 101. Because that would mean a pop quiz again. I grab my bag and hop on the back. There is an unexpectedly heavy amount of traffic this morning and I rush into class right on time. That was a little too close for comfort. As I stood in my seat, the professor clears his throat beginning the lesson. Good morning, class. For today's lesson, we will discuss the differences between energy and kinetic weapons. <sighs> Sounds interesting. Let's first review the two defensive mechanisms of a gear. The shield and hull. The hull. Okay, he's supposed to still talk. Okay, the the hull is a physical gear. The shield is a virtually <laughs> invisible barrier generated by using the core's energy. The strength of the shield varies greatly depending on the core, shield generator, and power allocation settings. Energy and kinetic weapons are meant to target opposite defenses. Energy-based arsenals are effective against shields as they quickly drain shield energy. But because of that, they are weak at penetrating the hull. Alternatively, kinetic weaponry is designed to puncture the armor. But they are weak against shields as the kinetic energy gets dispersed over a large surface area. The entire shield. For the purpose of war games and recreational use, only energy weapons are permitted. A gear is considered destroyed when it is depowered. Of course, outside of recreational combat, this rule does not apply. A student raises his hand. What about hybrid weapons? Ah, yes. Hybrid weapons are able to equally damage both the shield and hull. However, their damage strength is not as effective as a singular purpose weapon. The student holds in a knowledge band. Please turn to page 233 and let's take a look at the different types of energy weapons. I flip to the page that the professor mentioned and continue listening to the lesson. That's all for today. Please make sure you have all completed your web link assignments for next class. Oh no, again? Oh shit, I forgot I was supposed to make one project with Valerie as well. Uh, I pack my things and head to the hangar to meet up with my team. Our march is scheduled earlier than usual and we need to rethink our strategy. The plans we discussed had all revolved around our match against Strike X, but now that they are disqualified we have to come up with new ones against our new opponent. Crush them. I enter the hangar and look for Aura. When I arrive, everyone is already there. Show waves. Rosa? And uses that stupid nickname. Hey. Hi. Kaori greets me with a note. Good. We're all here. Let's head to the pre-combat room and start planning out strategies. Hey. Uh, we could return at the sound of May's voice. She waves, beams at us. As she runs closer. What are you doing here, May? Kaori sounds less than amused. I wanted to wish you all good luck. I'm so excited for our match. Yeah, good luck to getting crushed. Me too! My smiles and nuts. <sighs> you know, she's on bad terms with Kaori. I like Kaori, basically that means I don't like you. Ah, uh, stay quiet, whatever. I remain silent as does Kaori. May looks at the power of us before shrugging. Good luck again. I'll see you guys in the arena. As quick as she arrives, she's gone in flesh. She's so nice. I'm totally feeding off of her enthusiasm. I'm getting a better vibe off of this match too than the one off of Strike X. No. Sh Show blinks at Cory's out outburst. No. She's just putting on an act. She was trying to psych us out. Don't fall for it. I don't think that was her goal. You guys don't know her like I do. You can't trust her. Espe 
especially when she's acting all friendly like that. There has been that extra age, more of a soul than usual when Mason both. Anyways, let's go strategize while we have some time. She doesn't wait for us, don't worry, big ace power walking towards the pre-combat rooms. Hey, wait for us! We joke to catch up and follow her. It's... it's bad because... She might not be thinking clearly on the battle. After a quick change in our pilot suits, we meet at the holo desk. Curry sets up the match. A few minutes later, the whole day's project, the arena, and the gears involved in the fight. Alright, so what's the deal? Onna Bugiesha is a melee only team. It will be important to pay attention to our positioning and maintain a safe distance. Melee only, you say? I'm in for it. We've had close combat teams in the past. Claw of the Wild comes to mind from weeks ago. Mike is focused on the whole desk and takes a serious stone. Claw of the Wild was a melee-centric team, but their gears were knitted to perform a hybrid role. Based on Onabugesha's data, their gears are all custom-tailored for high bursts of speed and close combat engagements. We would benefit greatly from keeping a distance. If we play defensively, it will force them to chase us, and we can wear them down before going on the offense. Makes sense. What do you think, Brosif? I would totally go for a freaking combat, but yeah, in this one, let's let's no, let's wear them. let's wear them out. If they have no weaponry, we should do as much damage from uh, far as we can. We click the down before fully engaging will give us the advantage. Sounds good to me. Yep. And Curry both note. Okay, well we can all go range, but Aura can't. The team looks scary. I'll engage May head on and keep her out of the fight. This kind of goes against our plan. To my surprise, Carrie is her teeth and buys back at her tort. She says the cold days for its long glen size. I guess I don't have much of a choice. I'll hang back with you guys and intercept if one of the enemy gears manages to break through. My nuts. I think that would be best. Okay, let's recap. We'll play it from a distance and keep baiting their team. Since Mayu is our best shot, we'll keep her well protected and follow her lead. I still have a very bad feeling. Curry looks right at me. She finally looks more focused than I've ever seen her all week. You and Sho can play aggressively if we take the lead. I will intercept whoever reaches Mayu, if they even manage to. Got it? We all know that she is PayPal, even for Curry's always serious, her tone is more aggressive than usual. We have a rare opportunity to really boost our MMR, and we can't throw this chance away. Calm down. There's absolutely no way we can lose to Mei. Okay. That almost sounded like a threat. I nod uneasily and glance at Shu and Mayu, whose faces mirror my thoughts. Kari turns back to the whole desk and uploads her plans as we wait in silence. A loud beep announces the match, I mutter under my breath. Saved by the beep. Shu and Mayu seems equally relieved. Just make sure you guys stay focused. Eh. Uh, I feel like we should be a mom actually only worried about you. Kinda. Of course. Yeah. Shu forces enthusiasm to his voice and then trace our morale. Curry ignores him and Shu deflates. Let's go. She will do something stupid. Oh, she will, I think. Winter Day Arena from one side with Onna Bugicha of Nerves from the other. Welcome, everyone! Are you all ready for another fantastic match? The crowd drops into loud cheer. Because we have an amazing one lined up for you. Ona Fugesha versus 82911! Now that I think about it, I should check out the name. Female warrior belonging to the Japanese nobility. That's actually not a bad name in the end. Leona Bugeisha. Ooh. Everyone's combs are open as we wait the sound of Mace team get into position to wait with relaxed contents. As we also get information, the tension felt from before the fight, this no longer feels as friendly of a match as I thought it would be. As soon as the sound of Blair's Mace team dashes straight forward us, a faint shimmer around the gear reveals a hefty frontal shield. Bye. 
I raise her gun, takes aim while the three of us position to protect her. A ground flies to one of the gears in the distance. Although the shot connects, he disperses into a hexagon of shimmers. What? They're shields! They're tailored to deal with rail rounds. I need the shield to be weakened so that my shot can penetrate and force an immediate to power. <laughs> Affirmative. I'll stay back and protect. You two go aggressive and focus on knocking out their shield. Would we be angry if we knock them out without? I mean, with the shields, but also them out. KO, basically. Let's go. Roger that. Switching to EMP rounds now. Show anti boost forward, spraying a hail of energy rounds. The enemy team takes a vase maneuvers, May breaks away while the other three continue racing towards Mayu. The closest enemy gear takes the brunt of the damage and its front barrier drops. Mayu takes advantage of the vulnerability and aims a shot at the gear, instantly depowering it. Nice! One down! I have two of them approaching me. Howdy? Aura uh, has already left her position and sprints towards May. What are you doing? You have to protect Mayu! I am! I'm taking out May so she can't attack! That wasn't the plan! You two cover her! We're not in position to! <laughs> She's already engaged! Let's go! Good job, Kaori! I knew she would fuck up something. Shouldn't I boost back to Mayu, but it's too late. Her voice is slightly calm. That can be good. Then two enemy gears shift to shoe and I. Two on two, but not much distance. Play this out carefully. For once, show is serious. The gears split their focus and one of them charges towards me. While the other boosts towards show, I boost away in the game. Fire! My aim is true and the blast of energy rounds collides with the gear. She stumbles back from the heat while I create more distance between us. Before she can strike again, I move away to create more distance between us. I raise my guns for another shot. Fire! She tries dodge, but is too slow, and my shot spells her sheet. She's pulled back from the force of the blow, but once she gets her bearing, she boosts right back towards me. As she approaches, I boost away from her and weave around the arena, forcing her to chase me. I steady my aim. Uh, fire! She's too slow to dodge and my shot strikes right through her shield. Her gear can't support the heat and she's depowered. I look over at Shaw just in time to see an enemy gear strike. Look out! I boost closer and shoot again. The round connects with the gear just as her attack connects with Shaw. Shaw blows just a second too late and he's depowered but because she wasn't expecting my attack she left herself vulnerable and is also depowered. May is the only remaining enemy gear. One more gear and the match is ours! On it. I boost towards Karen and May, who are locked in duel. Aura strikes with vigor, but is parried. May retaliates with a wide swing, which Karen barely manages to block. I'm here. Don't interfere. Ah, there we go again. What? What do you mean, don't interfere? Let me handle this. Ah, uh, great. Cody, this isn't a simulation. It's a real match. Yeah, what you're saying! May is going down in a one-on-one. -on -one. She won't have any excuses this way! This is a team match! You can't put a win in jeopardy because you want to make this personal! What should you do? Ah, uh, okay, whatever. I will destroy her if she's destroyed later. I cut in those engines. What are you doing? <sighs> May knows my engine is up and she launches towards Eagle. Dick Fench. Eagle bursts into action. What are you doing? I'm not just going to sit there and let her take me out. Pardon me, strike back, fail, juked. Uh, strike back! Fuck it. At swinging her swing, I decided to using my thrusters and counter up with my own blade. With no shield activated on her back arm, my swing completely powers her gear. Nice one! She shows the only one to speak. Guys? My and Curry are both on end. Over she tears her blade and she exits the arena. I honestly don't even feel bad about that. The crowd roars to life, but their excitement doesn't penetrate the friction clouding our team. I hate to rush our competing teams, but we have another match in just a few minutes. Please clear the arena. Like always. May's team heads back to their pre-combat room as we head to ours.
When we enter the promo room, Kaori is nowhere to be found. She must already be changing. Trent, I go to change, but Mayu stays back. She must be really upset if she's actively avoiding Kaori. Man, I'm not liking the vibe right now. Say. Not that I'm blaming you or anything. I mean, you did hang back, but May charged at you. Yeah. I exhale. It's in the pods, no. Yeah. So and I finish changing and head back to the precomat room. As soon as we enter, Kaori storms up to me. My is nowhere to found. Why did you do that? Do what? You engaged me. Oh uh, no, she engaged me. Yes, and you fought back. Wow, what a surprise! Expect me to just sit there and give her a free kill. She opens her mouth three but pauses. You don't understand. Of course I. Oh, Cody, you aren't making any sense at all. Yeah, with that I have to agree here. Kaori dances and glares at show. I don't have to explain myself to you. No, Kaori. We turn around to see Mayu. Her jaw is set and her eyes are hard. I've never seen her this upset before. It's chilling. Kaori's eyes widen. Mayu? You put your personal agenda above the team and risked the match. True. Our positioning was compromised, and I had no support. Those two were out of position because of an aggressive call that you made. Boom! That ended up costing us two depowered gears, one of which was avoidable. Boom! So no, you do owe us an explanation. Boom. That's what happens when the calm person... Well, I would like to say burst in fury, but, you know... Basically just speaks up. Her voice is calm but severe. My eyes is a lot more unnerving than any of Curry's fury outbursts. This is getting us wrong because my own we are waiting for an answer, Curry. And three dots. I stay silent. Curry looks between the three of us, then sighs. I get it. I made a mistake. But I can't be expected to always make the perfect calls. I actually said the person that always expects the perfect outcomes. We don't expect that from you either, but when you start throwing the blame around... I'm sorry, okay? That didn't sound very sincere. It would help if you meant it. Kari clenched her hands in the face. I said I'm sorry! I messed up! It was my fault! Blame me! What else do you want? Hmm... Alright, I don't want to say that, but... What if actually she was the reason that the team... She was before and with shop actually like you know kinda broke up and such. Let's drop up and sure they said sorry, whatever. True cross your arms, but not at least money seems to have returned to her normal demander. Okay. We are this array to see after win, but I get the feeling that won't happen this time. After picking up our stuff, we exit the Procomat room. May's waiting for us outside, Link is the door. Hey guys! Congratulations on the win! I got May, barely registering the presence. I'm too wrapped up with what happened in the Procomat room! May smile falters when no one answers. Wow, with gloomy faces like that, I think you were the ones that lost. Shut up, May! May flinches from the first view of Kaori's voice. Oh, uh, God damn. I was just kidding, Kaori. This is all your fault! Ah. Uh. May start into silence. There we go again. You seriously need to calm down. May didn't do anything. You're being too harsh, Cowdy. Cowdy's size flushes. You guys are taking her side? I thought you were my teammates! <sighs> well, I'm afraid on this one I can't side with you. You aren't taking anyone's side, but since the match, you've been acting like a complete... Fool. So. Show cards himself and false sign and Kaori looks at him. A complete what? Fool! Nothing. She pauses when she finally speaks her voice cracks. I see. That's how you really feel. Shows uh, looks of tense. No, I didn't mean that. Kaori turns face me. You. She lowers her head. You always turn my friends against me. Uh, oh, great. She spins on her heel and walks away. When she thinks she's out of sight, she starts running. Kaori! Curdy's fear, Shu is about to rush after her when May blocks her path. I have to go apologize. I didn't mean what I said. May says. 
You need to give her space right now, or you'll just make it worse. Uh, show looks stern, but doesn't write full curry. Okay, will you tell us what the fuck happened, you bastard? I don't think I've ever seen her too upset to yell. I looks down worthy at her feet. I was too mean to her earlier. I'm sorry. Uh, well, I wouldn't say that, but... The you guys shouldn't blame yourselves. Calrie just needs time to cool off. Okay, you sound like you speak from experience. My size and not. What's up, her saying you always turn my friends against me? It's a long story. Something that happened back in middle school. Something to do with Ryota. You two go way back. Yeah, we do. Mace pockets the bread. She pulls out the phone and reviews the message. My team is wondering where I am. Don't worry too much about Kauri. She'll be okay. I'll talk to her when she's calmed down. I think it would be better if we were the one to the ones to talk with her. We note and watch May head out. I don't feel less guilty. I shouldn't have acted that way earlier. I don't feel guilty at all. That's the problem. No, it was my stupid comments. I never should have said something like that. I guess they still feel guilty too. I don't feel. <laughs> Let's give her space. Okay. I know it might be a bad idea, but I don't give a damn, and I'm going to check on her. I'll go see if she's okay. No, let me do it. Uh, no. I don't think she'll be too happy to see you right now, through. He's so. right. So thrones, but doesn't protest. You guys can get out, I'll text you once everything's okay. Are you sure? Yeah, yeah, there's no point in you guys standing around here. Let us know if we can help. Sure, we'll do. The one that doesn't feel guilty has to repair everything. I wave at the par and joke in the direction Kari went. But I like her, so yeah. Even the outbursts of hers, like, doesn't stop me liking her. So still you nice number one. The sun dips low in the sky as the evening rolls in. I search several locations for Curry until I arrive at one of the more secluded campus squads. There's only one student sitting on the bench with a bag at her feet. Curry's face is bent over her chest and I can hear faint sniffles. She probably wants to be alone right now. Okay. Console. Fuck it. Let's risk it for a biscuit. I place an arm on her shoulder. Hey. You okay? Curry glanced up at me for a second, but it was long enough for me to see how her eyes glittered. She rubs her eyes. Truth is bad. We're all sorry. We're crying all. We're all sorry. 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 We're sorry, Curry. <laughs> Curry shakes her head. You guys don't have anything to be sorry for. It was my fault. Uh, still, we are teammates. We should be helping each other, not fighting. You guys were right. This was personal. What? I've been busy with other stuff. I guess the stress got to me. Might be true. Other stuff. She shakes her head. Don't worry about it. It's nothing major. I just have to handle myself better. Hmm. I sit down beside her and enjoy the silence. The only sounds are of the soft whistles of the breeze and the chirp of wildlife. I let the tranquility wash over me, even Cory seems to be calmer. She looks up at the evening sky. Ask about fuck it. Let's ask. I've been wondering, what's your history with me? Curry looks at me. What do you mean? She looks like your best friend, but you, well, not so much. Curry sighs. We were best friends, but that was before she broke my trust. Our friendship can't go back to what it used to be, no matter how badly she wants it. What'd she do that was so unforgivable? Unforgivable. Curry looks away. If you're ashamed or embarrassed to tell me, could it really have been that bit? Yes. Although she answers quickly, she seems a little less certain than before. Well, alright, that's your call, but it's obvious that May still cares a lot about you. Curry doesn't sound for It's getting pretty late. You're going to head out. She stands up and picks up her back. Yeah. Unexpectedly, she smiles. Thanks. I smile back. No problem. <laughs> Want me to walk you back to your dorm? I'm okay. Alright. Have a good evening, then. You too. After she disappears around the corner, I head back to my bike. The entire ride home, I run through the events leading up to Curry's departure and our conversation afterwards. I'm just glad everything worked out okay. 
The house is quiet when I arrive home, I'm little relieved that as I'm exhausted, so I head straight to the bed and fall asleep fast, really fast. And I can't end the episode yet. <laughs> so let's go with the another day. Whatever. I turn off my alarm and stretched and let out the girl. Yesterday was really strange day and I'm certain feeling it now, at least. It's Friday! With a record full sigh, I rolled out of bed and prepared for my classes. I grab a quick breakfast and drive to school. Yuna is waiting for me in class and finds Brody when I sit down next to her. Hi. Hey! Sorry we haven't had a chance to catch up. How did your meeting go with Yuri? It wasn't as bad as I anticipated, even for... He did ask a lot of questions. About Eagle? No, uh, he was interested in my team back at CINY. She blinks in a James surprise. Oh! I was under the impression he was curious about Eagle. It's okay, I mind. Clearly he did his homework about how teams are running the states because he didn't seem surprised by anything I shared. You know that. There's a reason why he's the youngest account manager to manage a team at Dashu. Have you talked with me yet? Yes. He said that you show a lot of promise, and he's confident that if the rest of your teammates are as determined as you are, then you'll definitely be a force to be reckoned with. That's it? She furrows her brow in concern. Yeah. Should he have said anything else? I guess he was serious when he said I should talk to her about her brother. Actually, maybe now isn't the right time to bring up the conversation. <sighs> we are in class. God damn it, that's not a good moment. Yeah, let's talk about it later. Bombarding her right before class begins doesn't seem like a very smart timing. Thank you. The professor will get here and start class before we really have a chance to talk and you know probably spend all of class stressing out about this. Just checking, yeah. Oh, he's clearly into me. <laughs> Wait, what was the question again? Yeah, should he... Wait, wait, wait. Ah, god damn it. Y yes. He... That's why you need a freaking... <clears throat> how, do you, how do you call it? Uh... Check lock? Time lock? No, time lock, no. Check lock? I think it was check lock. Maybe I'm wrong. You know, where all the texts are written, basically, so we don't have to go back. That's much needed. So, usually if it's included, you can return with the text, kinda. Whatever. Okay, that's it. Yeah. So, should... Should he have... Seven? Should he have uh, something else? Just checking, just checking. We had a good conversation, so I just wondered if he had any other faults. Oh, no. But I'm glad to hear you enjoyed the conversation, too. Not as much as this one. He seems like he will be easy to work with. You're none He is. I glance at her not. The professor enters the room and gets settled. Good morning, everyone. Please open your textbooks to page 81. Your assignments are on the web link. Have a great day! Uh, thank you. Have a great day too. Yuna you and I punk our things and walk out of class together. Do you have another class to go to? No, but I have to meet my physiotherapy professor. I'm a TA for his class. I didn't know you were a TA. Yep, I don't usually help out in his Friday classes. But he's holding exams today, so I need to be there. What is a TA? Oh, teaching assistant. Okay, makes sense. Got it. Do you have any other classes? I have no clue. No, but I'm kind of hungry. I'll grab lunch in the pilot zone. Her face lights up. Oh, you're lucky. They're supposed to have really good food. I drink. Uh, they do, and they even have burgers. You know, as I, your eyes grow wide. Are they better than the ones we had? Well... No. I gaze grandly to Christ. Nothing can compare to what we had. She gives me a strange look. Um... Okay. Okay, that was a bad answer, sorry. <laughs> you know, pouts. Aww, I wish I could try them. 
Maybe I'll smuggle one out for you. Really? I'm taking back by her hopeful gaze. Uh, I guess if they have them, I will. They don't have them every day. She beans. That would be great. You not check the time. Oops, I'm going to be late. I'll see you later. The things you do for a girl. Bye. I wave as she dashes off. Alone, I make my way to the pilot's lounge. I check out the menu on display in the lounge. There is the usual Japanese fur that I can find in dining hall too. Today's special is Napolitan spaghetti. Popular known as ketchup spaghetti. Okay. The bartender approaches me and waits expectantly. Hmm. Order. Choose something to learn. Uh, let's go with that. Why not? I like spaghetti when in Rome. Or I guess in this case when in Japan. One Napolitan spaghetti please. The bartender knows. Are you sure it's a bartender then? If you maybe. He brings me my order and I take it to an empty table. As soon as I do, someone slides into the seat across from me. I'm ready to apologize and ask if he's able to stick in. When I take a good look at the girl's mind with me. Valerie? No. May? Is this seat taken? Uh, no, you can sit here. Thanks. This is a little uncomfortable, but through what happened yesterday, I think she feels it too. So, um, how's Kauri? Uh, she'll be okay. May not. I thought so. I haven't seen her that upset since... She has stayed. Seems Ryota. My blink, but seems really. Oh, Kauri told you about Ryota? Uh, sort of. I'm not about to agree. I was listening in on their conversation a few days ago. Did she say it was all my fault? Uh, it was certainly implied. May size. Uh, I wish I'd never said anything. I blink. May doesn't strike me as someone who has many regrets. She's always cheerful and seems to take whatever life throws at her in stride. I believe that you meant well. Thanks. Aren't you can we have a route with her as well or not? If only Kaori could see that. I wasn't trying to ruin her friendship with Ryota. Or my friendship with her. They would have been so cute together. You know, if Ryota hadn't been such a jerk. And how awesome would it have been if my two friends ended up together? Sounds like you were excited for her. I was! Even back then, Kauri was more reserved around people. She didn't like to show her feelings. So I was so excited when she told me she liked Ryota. Did you try to act as a cupid? Because that's a bad idea. If he was such a jerk, why were you friends with him? He wasn't always like that. Honestly, I don't know why he exploded the way he did. We used to do everything together. His family even took us on their vacations. Uh-huh. I knew him back in elementary school when he still had huge glasses and would tell goofy jokes that were too smart to be funny. Kids used to pick on him a lot. So we entered middle school and he worked hard to change his image. He lost the glasses and became more serious. The more I think about it, the more I think he stuck with us out of obligation, rather than true feeling. We were his only friends for a long time, until he hit his growth spurt. Then all the girls were suddenly interested. May looks thoughtful. Actually, I think it was when the other girls started to notice him that Kaori liked him too. Do you still keep in touch with him? Of course not. Oh, she hates it all over emphasis. I told him all that stuff in confidence, thinking maybe it would give him a push to make a move. Ouch. Well, he made a move, all right. He went out of his way to hurt Kauri. What kind of friend is that? That's not a person I want to associate with. His address, please. I have to kick his ass. It's just frustrating that Kauri would lump me into the same category as him. Just frustr this explains so much, May. Thank you. Huh? For what? Uh, well, I finally understand why Kauri acts so Kaori like. May's eyes widen. 
You think I turned her into that? It makes sense. She's good drawn, quick to make judgments, stubborn. May last. She's sort of always been like that. I think. <laughs> She's always been stubborn, at least. Well, if it's been so long, why do you still try so hard uh, with her? May looks at me as if I sprouted a third arm. She's my friend. I left her alone for a while so she could cool off. And I admit, I was angry at her for a long time, too. Then I saw her withdraw completely. Uh huh. No one should be alone. I know she hasn't forgiven me yet, but she will. Hopefully. How can you be so sure? It might take her a little longer, but in the end, Kaori always sees reason. May is completely confident that Kaori will forgive her. That must be how she can still act so familiar with her, even for Kaori does reciprocate those feelings. I have to admit, I kind of admire May for that. Anyway, since I really didn't get the chance to say it yesterday, congrats on your win. I blink. Uh, uh, yeah, thanks. But don't get used to it. Anna Bugeisha has a lot of practicing to do. It won't be that easy the next time we battle. Yeah, because I'm sure you will be the only one practicing. You called it easy. You're still going to lose. This was a good fight. Okay, if the next match we have have is half as good as then, we just get I'll be satisfied. My grins. Don't worry. Us girls won't be going down easy. From the corner of my eye, I spot Kaori and Sho enter the pilot's lounge. Sho is still alive and in one piece. They must have worked things out with each other. That's relief. Kaori searches the room and briefly makes eye contact with me before glancing away. Then, to my surprise, she walks over to us. Sho follows. Hey, just surprised I win. Kaori and Sho sit with us. What's going on, Brosif? Stop calling me that. Nothing much. Where's my class? I look over at Kaori. Hey. Hi. She looks sideways at me. Hi, May. May doesn't react right away. Then squeals inside and throws her arms around Cory. Hi. <laughs> May, stop it. And she's back. Cory pulls away in a half while May laughs. The four of us going to chat together. The tension I felt from yesterday are completely gone. As if they did, the day never happened. May even got Cory to laugh. And so on. Eventually, we all go our separate ways as everyone heads to their class or all their obligations. I still have some free time. Hey, I don't have any other choices. Well, technically, I can spend the time with Yuna because, well, we know she's in class. Good damn it. Eventually, we all go our separate ways. Ah, go. I receive an incoming call from Mayu. Hello? Hi! Um, I hope you don't think this is weird, but. Would you want to go to the comic book store with me? Uh, is there one on campus? N no, it's in town. My next class was cancelled, so I'm done for the day. Do you have class? Nope, I'm down here. She seems relieved. Great! I pre-ordered the new series of Boundless Stratus, and it's ready for pickup. I don't like going alone because the guys there are... Creepy, disgusting, uh, perverts. I wonder what's the reference for. Trials of Cold Steel, what's that? Oh, the Legend of Heroes! Okay. I don't have it, sorry. I've never played any of the games. But. I'm pretty sure I have this on my wish list. The Legend of Heroes. trying to chat and they keep asking me to play games and stuff <laughs> but 
feels weird. Show's not into comics, and he also thinks I'm overreacting. The Legend of Heroes. Yep, I have it on my wish. Oh, it's the newest release, actually. I don't think there are three more. Oh, damn it, so many games. Alright. Maybe someday. I would just feel more comfortable having you there with me. Sure, I'll go with you. How are you planning to get there? Um, by bus. I can drive us. Are you sure? I don't want to be any trouble. Uh, it's no trouble. How about meet you at your dorm and we can go together? Okay, see you soon. Did I trigger some other route somehow? What's going on? <laughs> we hang up and I head to her dorm. After I pick her up, I drive us to the comic book store in town. When we arrive, Mayu hesitates before she hops off my bike. You okay? Yeah. She takes a deep breath and gives me a note. I follow her into the store. I wonder if we are driving the pink bike or if it's already clean. Seriously, it's been bothering me. <laughs> as soon as we walk in my mouth, falls a gape in wonder. Every staff member in this store is beyond attractive. Is that a prerequisite to working here? Maybe. I guess I would fit in. Eh, I probably wouldn't. Anyway, as I continue to ground, the patrons are all on the same level as the staff. The women have beautiful smiles and shapely curves which turn into legs that go on for days. They smile at me as we walk past. The men are all tall with broad shoulders and I can see the faint outlines of muscles underneath their shirts. I train pretty hard myself so I don't feel so the place among the patrons here. I'm afraid I don't train at all lately and that's problematic. What is this place? My ooh, hello, nice clothes. Look good. My doesn't see even pause and head straight to the counter. When we walk past, the staff members get it out, but my keeps her head down and refuses to make eye contact. As we approach the counter, uh, an equally attractive and friendly man greets us. Good to see you again, Mayu. Is there anything I can help you with? Hi. I got an email saying my pre-order for Boundless Stratus has arrived. Hmm. I don't think we had any copies yet, but I'll double check in the back stock room for you. Go ahead. In the meantime, you and your friend should have a look around. Sure, sure. After flashing Kasa Hensel's mind, he heads into the back room. Do you want to take a look at their manga? Yes. Sounds good. Now it leads me through the section that borrows the titles. Are you a big fan? Manga fan? I read some. I also read some and, well, trying to keep up with, with what I started and it's still live. But that cuts my eye and I enthusiastically grab the book off the shelf. Oh, hey, I remember this. Did you ever read this one? I hold the book out to my while well, she examines the cover. She furrows her brows and slowly shakes her head. No. Really? It was super popular when we were in middle school, at least it was in the States. What's it about? I don't know the title, so how would I say? Uh, the main character and his family had to return home to take care of his sick grandfather, who passed on a protective charm for the main character. At his first day in his new high school, he gets into fight and accidentally activates the charm, which turns out to be a cat spirit demon girl. I, I don't know this one. Um. No clue what this is. Once activated, the cat girl swears for like the main character and disasters of her as another student at his school. This causes all sorts of filler scenarios between her and the other girls in his class. That doesn't sound very familiar. Same here, to be honest. I have no clue what this is about. I shrug. It's really silly, but it was fun at the time. Which character was your favorite? The shy girl, the fury girl, the nice girl, the flirty girl. Uh... If we are referring to what's going on now, let's ask for... Okay, the shy girl would be then Mayu, the fiery girl would be Kaori, the flirty girl would be Valerie, and the nice girl would be Yuna, so I'm gonna say Yuna. And I, I like the girl who is always sent polite, she's always trying to help because she's very caring. You're right, she does sound nice. Huh. Anyway, I can't believe they still have it. I put the book on the shelf. What else do you read besides boundless stratus? Jillian, 
now shots should be fired I have not watched Evangelion <laughs> maybe a few episodes I think they were aired really really late when I was younger on some uh, well, what was supposed to be a gaming channel, but after like 12 p.m. I th yeah, no, well, yeah, I think 12 p.m. after 12 p.m. because it's middle of the night, and uh, they started uh, airing basically anime. I think it was after that, maybe even later. And I'm pretty sure Gundam was there. I'm pretty sure I watched Afro Samurai there, and I think Evangelion might have been there as well. But yeah, because it was very late and I rarely had the chance to basically sit in front of the TV at that hour as I didn't have first of all the TV in my room back then and second of all uh, even after I got the TV I didn't have the access to that program anymore. I think it's... I wonder if it's still actually on. What was it called? Damn it. Uh, Gaming channel in TV. Oh, okay. I I know the name now. Is it still? Oh, I'm wait. I'm mistaken. From 10 p.m. Seriously? Oh, okay. That okay. The gaming channel. I remember now. There was a cartoon channel, and from 10 p.m. the game channel was on because I read this now. From 10 p.m. to 2 a.m. Uh, and maybe during that time as well, or after that time, the anime was on. Oh, actually, there is the names of anime. Okay, Afro Samurai. So yeah, I was correct about this. Uh, Cowboy Bebop. I think I watched a bit of it because of that as well, but. I still haven't watched it fully, which is not good as well, as well, as well, as well. Uh, yeah, Evangelion, it was there, okay. But I don't see, oh yes, Gundam Wing, okay, got it. Isn't Gundam Wing the one, the one I actually watch now? Well, whatever. Anywho, well, that would be it of in my anime past, I guess. So yeah. And currently I'm watching Gundam, kind of trying to actually go through all of that, but my god, there is so much. So many of episodes, so many of seasons and so on. Anyway, I'm meaning to see a trend here. She blinks. What do you mean? Well, a lot of the mangas you mentioned have giant robot battles. That's true. Nice. My cheeks sting pink. I mean, I do come from a long line of pilots. It's only natural that I gravitate towards those type of manga too. I have no pilots in my family and I still like mechs. You haven't read any other types? Mm, no. Father wasn't very fond of manga to begin with. The only reason he let me read the ones I did was because they were sort of relevant to my studies. Mm hmm. Your voice lowers to a mumble. And because he didn't know about most of them. <laughs> She stares in the ground and shouts her beat when she cuts my green. Who knew, Mom, you had a rebellious sight? Well, if you think about the Gundam, I guess being rebellious kind of makes sense. Let's find a manga that you'd like. That's not gear related. Uh, okay. As well, peruse the shells. One of the gorgeous men nearby politely greets us. Excuse me, I couldn't help but overhear you're looking for a new manga. My sister just finished this one, and she loved it. He hands my book of a girl in the flute. <laughs> I think I know what this is referring to. Maybe you'd like it. You're my uh, April, right? April, right? She got to Vakimi Nosa, right? I think that was how it was in Japanese title. My she's from one foot to the other. Thanks, man. That's really nice of you. Ah, uh, um, th thanks. No problem. Underman interject. I highly recommend that one too. Although there are some parts later on that get deal with some heavy subjects. That's true. If you want something more lighthearted, you might want to check out that author's second title. Uh, oh. Uh. You guys are making a console. 
I found my joints in the conversation. Oh, I've read that one. You're talking about the boy and alien pet, right? Yeah, that's the one. That one is really funny. The two of them get into all sorts of shenanigans. Okay, I don't know what you say about a boy and an alien freaking pet, but the one thing that comes to my mind for some reason is Parasite. <laughs> huh, I'll have to check that out too. My stairs hope to steer the crowd around the crowd as they continue to agently pull her aside and point to the book, still cast tight in her hand. So, what do you think? She takes a breath and through knives, then scans the synopsis. It's about a girl who lands her dream role as the solo flutist in a symphony. But when her mother gets sick, she has to decide between her family and her passion. Oh, so... That's a bit different to what I thought it was. Actually, I think this would be very interesting. I agree. Well, mission accomplished. The man who originally suggested the title is my interesting book. I hope you enjoy it. We part from the group, who are still deep in discussion. My breeze is high for leaf. I'm glad you came with me. Hmm? Didn't you see what happened back there? That happens all the time. Well, what a surprise. Attractive woman getting attention. That's what my mean by overbearing, but they seem like really cool guys to me. At least you got a new book out of it. She smiles at the title in her hands. True. I've just taken a couple of times for myself a glass at my... Let's go check uh, on your pre-order. She nods happily. We head to the counter where the clerk is waiting for us. Here is your pre-order. Thanks! I had to cancel mine. Of, uh... Chaos Child, the Vita title. Because I ordered some other stuff at the same time like seven items to get free shipping one went out of stock then I think uh, exactly chaos child asked the question what's going on and such but well they were supposed to check I didn't get an answer then another thing went out of stock and well that's where I gave up cancelled and yeah life is all good I'll buy something different then I guess I still need to redo my room completely. So yeah, the gaming room basically. The gaming room slash bedroom and such. Anywho, Ooh, uh, I place the books I picked up on the counter and hand over my card. I'd like to check this out, please. Oh yeah. I think she'd forgotten about the manga in her hand. She puts it on the counter. Uh, ah, sure, why not? Offer the way. Include that one in my purchase too. She blinks at me surprise. You don't have to do that. I know, I want to. She, I smile at her and she blushes. But you've already done enough just by agreeing to come here with me. It's fine, my... That's not much. Any good friend would do that. She still has done. I appreciate it. Here you go, sir. Thank you. The cashier turns my card and hands me a receipt and the bag with all of my books, including Miles. Now that I think about it, why did you give him your, car your card? That's not how you pay for stuff. Unless you have the one that you know you need to... You know... Swoosh to the... Through the machine, right? Because now mostly it's like... Uh, you know, zooming the thing closely and done. Uh, yeah, new types, new types. Well, my eyes are white as she stares at the back. The cashier winks at me. Have a nice day. Thanks. I grin my Consider this an early birthday present. I blush deeply. Thanks. Uh, <laughs> towards the door, my bumps into someone. She looks up in surprise. May. Hi guys. I know you like to read manga. Oh yeah, it's a secret pleasure of mine. Really? May Green is appreciated you as one of the men who walks past, so that's what she means by secret pleasure. At least I'm not the only one who sees this. May you 
Mayu follows her mouth. View? It's inside a mall plaza. May raise an eyebrow. I understand her look at old well. How is Mayu not seeing this? Anyway, I've got some things to check out, so I'll see you later. <laughs> she gets deeper in the show up while Mayu and I walk outside. Ready to get back. <laughs> she nods. We hope to America and the drive us back to campus. Thanks for taking me to the comic book store. Thanks for introducing it to me. Now I know where to go. Catch up on my series. She smiles. I'm really happy you like to read manga too. Sho doesn't really care for it. How? He seems like someone to be actually into it. Ah, uh, well, whatever. You think he'd like it more since there are pictures? My giggles. Be nice. <laughs> anyway, father will be here soon, and I still have to clean. By clean, do you mean hide your new books? She blasts them. <laughs> it would be best if you didn't know. Anyway, I'll see you later. I will goodbye and watch her disappear into the door. My phone rings unexpectedly. It's Valerie. Hello? I've got a surprise for you. Come to the hangar. Oh, did you hack it? What is? She hang up. Of course she hang up. I guess better go see what's up. After I swap myself to the hangar, I make a beeline to Eagle, where he's perching in front of my terminal, but jumps up once she sees me. She moves from the terminal and gestures for me to sit. Voila. I start the scrolling code on the screen. She's got to stop acting like I can read this stuff. Hmm, interesting. What is this? It's a manual documentation. It needs to be cleaned up before it can be fully understood, though. So, you called me over to show me something that's not complete. While you pause. <laughs> if you were even a little bit technical, you'd be able to understand this achievement. Besides, my script is parsing it as we speak. It'll be done in a few minutes. We wait patiently for her program to finish running. I watch as she keeps an eye on her script. She's content in the program, yet keeps glancing at it, exposing the eagerness beneath her calm demeanor. I can't help but wonder. How do you get into engineering? Girls can't be engineers. Never said that. Actually, girls and en girls, engineer girls, are kinda, kinda, not kinda. Are well, there are some that are attractive and such. That's not what I said. But it does. It's like a puzzle. What? Taking things apart and putting it back together, finding new ways to piece everything together to make it a better product. The possibilities are endless, even if we can't see all the solutions just yet. And you just discovered it by accident. She shrugs and becomes strange to Things broke around the house a lot. If I didn't fix it, then it would be broken forever. Why not just buy a new one? It always worked fine once fixed. Why spend that extra money? It was that moment. He realized how great of a woman she is. I, why did you have to fix it? Why not your parents? She frowns in disdain. My mom couldn't be bothered with things like that. If the computer broke, she'd pretend the problem didn't exist until she needed to use it. Then she'd go and buy a new one because she needed to use it immediately. Money was always tight and... That's why I started trying to fix things. The first thing I ever properly fixed was my bike. I was 15 and my neighbor at the time was a young woman at university. She helped me fix it and when she learned I was interested in this stuff, she gave me a bunch of how-to books for my birthday. I guess I was snug that my dad was pretty handy. He taught me how to take care of my things. But again, safely. Could've fooled me. Eagle's always a little worse for wear by the time he gets to me. Isn't that right, Eagle? <coughs> She goes affectionately into my gear. It's not a puppy. I shall beep traps in our conversation. Valerie whips the back towards the screen. It's done. Valerie and I both lean to get a better look at the screen. I turn my head to ask her a question when her hair brushed my cheek. It's soft and smells like flowers. I had an idea is how close we were to each other until now. Valerie's focus on the screen to notice her slender figures. 
fingers, sorry, dance across the keyboard. Oh, this makes a lot of sense. What makes a lot of sense? Why your core only activated that one time? The function of the core was set to debug mode with a single run instance. English, please. The overdrive mode was meant to be used for testing purposes, so it was set to only activate once. Fuck. What does it mean? It means, if we can figure out how to change the setting and find out the parameters of activation, you could use the overdrive mode on demand! Hmm. My eyes widen as I consider the possibilities. Serious? Yeah! In theory, anyway. <laughs> She's queen, said the code. That's not even the best part. Here are blueprints with algorithms and formulas. What do they say? But I put a finger to credit. Hmm. It seems to be incomplete. But we might be able to use this as a bit of reverse engineering to fill in the gaps. If we can figure this out, we can understand the details of the core. Looks like if only one Kong came with a manual. Oh no, that's not going to be set. Can we have it ready for the next punch? Okay, good stuff. Let's say this. You're kind of amazing. She grins. About time you noticed. Why did that include this function of my core? And why did you tell me? I have so many questions and too few answers. Let's keep it a secret. A secret? Uh, yeah, there's no point getting the team's hopes up when we don't even know if this will work. Plus, I don't get anyone snooping around my ear. I took... I look potent, the evaluate. She's my scene or something. What? That's what brought us together. Are you saying you wish you'd never met me? Of course not, but one Valerie is more than enough. She smirks. Don't I feel special? I hope so. Valerie gets to work and I watch her for a while. She's working too fast for me to comprehend what she's doing and I don't want to interrupt her crew to explain it to me. After a few minutes she glanced back to me. You really do like to watch, don't you? <laughs> eh. First it was Sho and Mayu at the beach, now me. I didn't watch them. Her eyes sparkle. So, you just like watching me then? Too bad this isn't that interesting. After saying goodbye, I leave her to do her thing. <laughs> ah, I still have some time before I head home tonight. What do I feel like doing? Shoe or Valerie? Show, actually. Well, Valerie is doing her thing. Show no clue. Let's go. I feel productive today, but I don't want to hit the books and start just yet. I know a good way to channel this energy. I'll work out at the gym. Besides, I have no plan. Dain, this sweet bob. I have body, but whatever. I head to the rec center and get changed in the lockers. As I make my way to the wave room, I'm paralyzed by the gymnasium. Normally it's empty, but today it's full of people. Is there a class going on right now? And I took a bar curiosity, I peek in the room. The gym is checked out with equipment, balance beams, steel rings, parallel bars, and even birds. Homel horse, etc. I can see the floor beneath the layer of blue mats. Students seem to fly and flee from all corners of the room. My mouth drops open in wonder as I spot a very familiar face hanging on the steel rings. Show! At the sound of his name, Show turns towards the sound of my body and loses his grip. I win as he comes, crushing the mat below. After a second, he gets up and ramps his head, then looks at me. I bet. Such grace, much elegant. I clap slowly. I'll give that fall a solid 5 out of 7. <laughs> show show throws. Hmm, not funny, man. I was going for a personal record. What are you doing here? Show wipes the sweat off his face with towel. Trying to balance on the still rings. No, I mean, I didn't exactly picture you as a gymna gymnastic type of guy. Why not? It helps with staying fit, build strength, flexibility, core training. A pair of girls woke up, walked past wearing the Ace Academy gym wear. Their stomachs are completely flat and they have perky features. They flash up smiles as they walk by. Yeah, keep fit. I think you are not talking about yourself. I think you've tell me, you said, you basically are thinking here about what your eyes are seeing. Understandable. Um, flexibility. <laughs> you already said that one. Did I? His attention is on another group of girls practicing their splits in the corner. Mm, and that has nothing to do with it. He grins. It's a bonus. 
I'm pretty sure that's main curse for you. I will neither confirm nor deny that. We both agree. Plus, you're competing with yourself to always be better. Huh? You set personal records for yourself, and then the next time you come, you try to beat them. I'm not entirely sure where he's going with this. Like how long you can hold yourself up, I guess. That's just step one. Once you're comfortable just holding your weight, then you start doing tricks like handstands. It's a lot harder than you think. He motions towards the steel bars. Try it! Sure. I psych myself up. Alright, let's do it. That's the spirit! I jump and catch the steel ring, saying my body hang. The rings will be around as I try to pull myself up. Oh, this is not harder than I thought it would be. Use your core! I squeeze my core tight and slowly lift myself so my body makes a straight arrow shape over the rings. The rings tremble in time with my arms, binding across the balance, and then the ring I gently pull my legs straight out in front of me. Sure, watch this move right eyes. After holding this pose for a couple of seconds, I relax and hold back down to the ground. You sure you haven't done this before? You were a pro! Uh, I grin. Well, nope, I knew I had nothing to worry about, piece of cake. Oh, a girl I don't recognize. Wave and show as she races over. How's it going? Hmm? Hey, he told me. Don't tell me. She looks me up and down. She smiles me. Who's your friend? He told me. Eat Brosif. Why? Why are you doing this to me? Brosif, meet Hitomi. She blinks. Brosif? Let's not talk about it. Show notes and dreams. Uh, Arthur. Whoa, really? Uh, why is he surprised? I know slowly. He wraps his chin in thought. I've been calling you Brosa for so long I forgot. Yeah, good job. He told me laughs and poked your chest shows arm. <laughs> That's adorable. Wait, someone is into you actually? Show beeps. I'm just about done. How about you? I'm almost done too. Okay, I'm going to start packing. Come find me when you want to head out. Show notes, he told me smiles him and their waves at me. Nice to meet you. Uh, same. So bounces off to the gym. I assume she's going to change in her locker room. You two know each other well? Kind of. We met in this class. Her dorm building is actually the one next to mine. That's pretty coincidental. I know, right? Anyway, we ran into each other once and when she realized we lived so close together, she insisted that we walk back together ever since. Okay, I understand her thinking. Do you? Shaw? The way that she asks what Shaw, it's obvious that she has more than a casual interest in him. Of course, knowing Shaw, that fact isn't obvious to him. <sighs> do I tell him or do I not? Shaw, do, do you want to know? Okay, let's say it, whatever. Uh, but you know she's into it, right? Show wings and raise an eyebrow. Uh, what are you talking about? The laughing, the arm touching, the asking to walk back together. Show shocks. She's just friendly. You're looking too much into it. Well, I'm telling Mayu. Eh, well, I wonder what Mayu would think if you were a well king, guys, back to the dogs. What? D don't do that! <laughs> I thought nothing's going on. Nothing is going on. But I don't want Mayu to get the wrong impression. You're not Mayu, so why would she care? And it's you. <laughs> well, doing dating? Sure, you're not dating Mayu, so why would she care? She wouldn't. So then what's the issue? She blinks and throws. It's not an issue, but still. Alright, alright. I think Troy is really confused about his own feelings. Alright man, sounds like he'll be heading off soon, so... And I still have to go to work out. Shadows. It was... It was good seeing you. You should stop by again. Sure, sure, I think about it. Show gives me a browser fist bump. Fuck, I s So basically we are using this now.
Hmm. Okay. I go work. Oh, that's this side. Head home, I think. Wait, did I skip something? Yeah, yep. Okay, separate ways. Head home. Good. The house is quiet when I get home. Uncle Kat is still working his crazy hours, and Tinky is probably still at her club. Stifling I am and trying to upstairs. It's been a long day, and I still. And all I want to do is relax. As I pass by this room, I just heard doors close. Uh, I guess she's home after all. I think nothing of it until I hear a deep, extremely male laugh behind Nikki's clothes or Nikki's guild shortly follows. What is this? There's a boy in Nikki's room. And they are behind closed doors. No one told my what? I pass to her room. Nikki's eyes widen and her mouth drops open. The boy twists to look at me from the shirt beside the bed. There's a boy in <laughs> what are you doing? Who is this guy? Nick leaves from the bed and tries to push me away, but I stay rooted to the ground. Is this Ken? I turn to the guy, not really pulling on my arm. Are you Ken? He feels like a deer in headlights <laughs> and stammers out an affirmation. Yes? Ken Yen Koka. <laughs> ah, his surname is freaking crazy as well. Ken Yen. Leave him alone! We're just studying! Fine, fine, fine. Stunning is that what the kids are calling it these days? Yes! What? No! <laughs> studying as in studying! <laughs> she points to her bed. I take another look around the room. Nikki's bed is prowled with books, tablets, and laptops. And he's holding an open textbook in his lap. A look of pure terror on his face. I'm not fooled, I know underneath that good kid face, facades, there is a demon just waiting to pounce on my cute, innocent Mimoto. Ken is in my class, and we have an exam next week. So? Like that Ken, who cowers from mine's there. So, now that you know nothing weird is happening, get out! I cross my arms. Hmm. Actually, I think I'll be a good brother. And I'll stay and help you to study. What? Whatever you learn now, I already studied. Don't you have your own homework you can do? We're studying fine without you. <laughs> Are you sure about it? I think Ken here would appreciate the help. I glad Ken who helps hard and not. Actually, it would be an honor to have the help of an ace pilot. <laughs> no, it wouldn't. I narrow my eyes, Ken. Very suspicious. I've got my eyes on you. Don't try and can see Move him out of the room. Okay, don't even spot it. I didn't think it were possible, but Ken's eyes grow even wider. His gay shaves in purple to Twinkie and back to me. I, I, there's nothing happening. I'm not thinking anything. Get out. I'm not going to fail my test because you're being a total weirdo. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm leaving. I'm glad it's gone again. <clears throat> Just remember. Whatever you're thinking of doing, her, I will do to you and... No! No! <laughs> it's just math! Twice. Out! And he throws me out of the room. Door. I know. We'll leave the door open, so you stop being stupid! Thank you. Luckily my room is across from Nikki's. I need my door open to while. I try to work on my assignments. I'm too distracted to focus. I strain to hear what they're talking about. Ever. Every so often I hear them repeat them a formal or compare answers on equations. <laughs> I guess they really are studying. This time! Eventually I give up and watch videos on YouTube. After about two hours, Ken goes home. Nikki slams her shut to her room. Shesh, what's her problem? Now that I can find Fox again, I finish my up my assignments and easily fall asleep afterwards. And afterwards, I end the episode. Hope you enjoyed it, and see you tomorrow. Hopefully. Bye-bye.